A big question everyone's asking is what's happening with the global economy. From your vantage point, how do things look? I think we, we continue to see many of the challenges that we shared a few months ago when we announced our results. If we look at the impact of the war, especially in Europe, the situation in China, inflation, we clearly see many challenges that we need to manage. I think what is important for companies like us is to focus on what we can control, which in our case is manage our cost, while at the same time we continue to invest in our growth areas. Because we don't know when the economy is going to get better, but we know it will get better and we need to be well positioned when this happens. But the PC, but the PC market in particular is, is slowing down. How, sh how sharp, sharp of a slowdown are we seeing? I think it's in line to what we're expecting. A few weeks ago, we shared that our expectation was that we were going to see a decline of around 10 percent in our fiscal year. And this is more or less what we are seeing. So it's as we were expecting. But again, what is also important is the market is still bigger than it was before the pandemic. So which gives us a lot of optimism for whenever the, the situation will get better, the opportunity that we continue to have. That's what I'm trying to figure out with so many of these tech companies, including yours. There was such a distortion with the COVID period over earning, building some capacity, everybody working at home and digitally. And now there's a give back. So it's hard to get a clear read on what's happening with underlying demand, given we're still in that, that period. I think in our case, we look at kind of the core fundamentals. If we look at time people are spending in front of their PCs, of what the PCs are being used for, Clearly, both are driving to more utilization of bigger market, and this is why we think whenever the economy will recover, we are going to see a stronger PC market than what we were seeing before the pandemic. And printers too? And, and printers too. I think what different between home and office, what we are seeing is the usage at home continues to be above the expectations we had before the pandemic. Office is clearly below because there are still many employees not going to the office, but one compensates the other. You have strong views on hybrid work? We have a very strong view because we think it's here to stay. We think that... Because it's good for your business too. It's good for our business, but it's also good for our employees. And what we need to do is make sure that we adapt the culture of the company, the systems of the company to allow flexibility, while at the same time we bring employees to the office for those things that really require collaboration, discussion, because those things are very difficult to do are when employees are remote. Are you still seeing the same productivity levels from, from work from home that we saw during COVID? I think working from home, we haven't seen a big impact in productivity. I am more concerned about the lack of discussion, the lack of interaction yeah. that creates small issues or problems that shouldn't happen just because people, employees were not connecting. This is really what we need to fix. What about supply chain, Enrique? Where has it normalized? It's all, almost normalized, both because the situation in supply chain has improved, but also demand has gone down. So the net effect is that supply chain is not a headache anymore as it has been for the last two or three years. What about China in particular? Obviously important for production. What have you seen as far as coming back online? So one is from a demand perspective, we are seeing demand holding, especially in our categories which was a concern that we had, but demand has been holding. And from a production perspective, production has been very stable. We haven't seen a big impact of the reopening. We haven't seen a big impact of the change of the COVID policies. We are still early, but so far, so, so far, so good. One of your big competitors, Dell, recently announced that they were moving all supply out of China. Is that something that you're actively working toward we, as well? We are always looking at how to improve the resiliency of our supply chain. And this is something that we have been working on for some time. China is a very important part of our supply chain and it's going to continue to be for the foreseeable future. So you're not making that break necessarily? That's some no, of the other not companies. radically, no. Um, I wanted to hit the Just 100 list, which we, we revealed with Just Capital. You did well, 47, I think, was the overall number. You know, for, for a company, my, my question was, you get high marks when it comes to making pledges to hire a number of diverse applicants, gender pay equity. Are those things harder to achieve when you're in a period of belt tightening and, and layoffs, as you've announced? It is. It is harder to achieve, but they continue to be important. So they need to con they need continue to be a big part of our focus. Of course, it's harder because if we don't hire as many people, changing percentages is going to be more difficult. But if we look at where the company needs to go long term, we need to continue to increase the diversity of our teams especially at the executive level, and you're going to see us continue to do that in the future. What, what is the environment like? You announced four to 6,000 layoffs. 
Is there more coming? Is there more belt tightening? We, we are executing the plan that we announced. So at this point, no changes from, from what we announced. This, in our case, is a three-year plan really linked to significant changes that we are going to be doing in key processes of the company, adopting more digital, transforming some of the development processes. So as we will execute that is when people or some of our employees will be impacted. In any case, we have shown that we can manage that really with tons of respect for employees. And this is what we have done and what we will continue to do. Finally, on, the, on acquisitions, I'm curious how you're thinking about it now that we've seen tech valuations come down so much. Do you think there's more pain or are you looking? We, we have said that we think that M&A needs to be part of the, our plan to continue to invest in the growth areas and therefore we continue to look. But also we did a major acquisition only two quarters ago. So we are working to continue the integration and complete the integration. But of course we, we are going to be looking because if there are good opportunities to accelerate our growth, and create value for our shareholders, we will do it. In the growth areas, gaming is one of them. Gaming, uh, hybrid work, where we continue to see a lot of demand from our customers, workforce solutions, consumer services, are all areas where we see opportunities to grow and we are gonna continue to do that. Just this year, we, our growth businesses represented $11 billion, growing double digit. It's a big number, even in a difficult economic situation.